Hey, how's it going? This is Todd with Film Bodega, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use our 6K dust elements inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So we've got this pretty cool shot here, this ballerina kind of dancing across this beam of light. And let's go ahead and add some nice looking atmospheric dust to this shot. Right off the bat, I would just like to say that this approach really only kind of makes sense in Premiere with shots that are locked off around a tripod. If you're gonna do any sort of motion tracking, like if you have a moving shot, you're gonna wanna go into After Effects or Fusion or some sort of compositing software. To do it in Premiere, you're gonna you're gonna be pretty much stuck with a locked off shot like this. And as you click through, you'll notice that each uh, file has a kind of a name sort of associated with the way that it looks visually. So we have everything from these kind of bokeh dust elements kind of swirling around. We even have some anamorphic stuff shot with an actual anamorphic lens. So you get the kind of the oval shaped bokeh there. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's a lot of different stuff to kind of pull from and build either a very natural looking like this, this one has a very natural look to it. So uh, let's just kind of click through and, and get a sense of what uh, might look nice in this scene. So um, I'm gonna go for something that kind of feels like there's some, some dust pretty close to the camera um, that just sort of looks nice and um, big, I guess, in the frame where you have some out of focus points and you have some really in focus points. And I think right now, uh, slow layer dust kind of fits that bill. So I'm gonna set an endpoint and I'm gonna just drag this in using that same video only button. We're just drag it on top. And so right off the bat, you'll notice we kinda, we don't really have the result we were hoping for. So we do have some dust in the scene, but it looks a little too big. And that's because our dust element is in 6K and our sequence here is in 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna right click on the dust and I'm gonna just select set to frame size. And that's gonna resample the footage to the size of the sequence. And so with the dust selected, I'm gonna go to the effect controls panel and we're gonna navigate down to the opacity drop down here. If you don't see it, you might have to click on this little button here. Um, and we're gonna use a blend mode. Now, when you click on this little drop down, you'll have a lot of different options. But in this case, uh, we the two that we're gonna focus on is screen and uh, this add linear dodge mode. So add is gonna give you kind of a little bit more of a punchier look. Like if you're trying to do fire embers or something like that, you, you would definitely wanna use add. But screen is gonna give you kind of a more natural result. So that's what I'm gonna go for. And I mean, that looks, that looks pretty cool. Um, I mean, not a whole lot you even really need to do with that, but to me, it might, it might be a little bit too much dust. It might look like she's about to, you know, start sneezing or something. Uh, so what we could do if we wanted to control the amount of dust is there's a few different options. So one thing is in these darker areas, you might not see it quite as much. Maybe you kind of only want to have it sort of localized to this brighter part of the image. So let's kind of find like right there when the, the light's busting through. Um, so what we could do is in the opacity tab, we could actually just grab the pen tool and then we could just draw a shape sort of uh, like a reverse vignette around the uh, middle part where the, the light is the brightest. And uh, see there, now we could kind of have this little bit of a hard edge. So what we need to do is just feather that quite a bit. And when I say quite a bit, I really mean like a lot, like a thousand, something like that usually looks pretty natural. So now we have a nice little fall off to the edges here. And it doesn't look like, you know, she's being swarmed by bees or something. And then, and then say you wanted to further control the amount of dust in the scene. Um, so let's say, even still, this looks a little bit unnatural to you. Um, what I would do is I would actually just grab a Lumetri color effect. So here in the effects panel, I'm just gonna search Lumetri and I'm gonna drag that onto our dust layer here. We can just go down here into the curves panel and just kind of crush down the dark part of the image. It's gonna remove a lot of the less bright pieces of dust and the ones that are gonna stick behind are gonna be the, the little points of light. And you, you may not even be, be able to see that with compression. I really hope you can. Um, so as you crush that down, you'll actually see like, so here's if we bring it all up and then as you bring it down, you get a little bit more of a natural look. You could actually take the highlights, add a node there and bring those up and those are gonna pop quite a bit more. And so usually what I'll do at this stage is I'll just kind of dissect the way that the light looks. So, you know, right here, it's an orangish kind of light. And so we could actually just go into the red channel here I'm on the higher part. I'm going to bring in a little bit of red. I'm going to bring in a little bit of green and then I'm going to pull out the blue. 
And so there you go. Now you get kind of a nice orange dust floating around in the room kind of look. And if you wanted to change the color of the dust, like say you wanted these to look more like embers, pretty simply all you have to do is let's just do a tint effect. So color correction tint. Just drag that on top of your footage here. And then we'll change the map white to. And let's say if we were trying to do embers or something, we would just let's do like a, a bright sort of orangey red like that. And boom, now you have something that kind of looks like embers. And you could kind of play with the amount to tint if you wanted to. So you could get a little bit more natural fall off between the different colors. And then say you wanted it to be even more kind of natural looking, grab another uh, Lumetric color effect. And we'll go to the curve drop down here. Let's just make these, these ones really, really pop. These ones a little darker. And then, you know, maybe give it a little bit more saturation. And there you've got some kind of orange looking, embery looking stuff. And you could layer some together. So I've, you know, grabbed like one of the bokeh ones and throw it in on top and start playing with the curves again. And, you know, now you got some like, you know, really cool sort of different layers going on, stuff like that. So if you, you can really just sort of play with and customize the amount that you want these to show up. Mm -hmm.